What's up guys, Joey here. I just wanted to share a method to restore the Classic Photo Viewer app for those of you that don't want to go through the learning curve of using the new Photos app in Windows 11. Um, but I'll also go through optimizing the Windows 11 Photos app as well as a few tweaks you can do with your own systems that I feel optimize the image viewing experience in Windows 11. So this is specifically to do with viewing images and you know some light editing. If you want to quickly edit an image, resize it, crop it and things like that. The, um, the default settings aren't that intuitive uh, to me. So I'll just share what, I do, what I've done on my own system. And yeah, just the basic uh, classic photo viewer app fix. So first off, for those of you that want the classic photo viewer, I'll advise you to download WinArrow Tweaker. And this is a tool that does basically automated registry changes. So you don't have to go into the registry where you can accidentally um, type the wrong key or mess stuff up. You can just end up with invalid keys that don't work. Um, if you're not confident to do registry tweaks, then this tool is another good way to do it. And it's easily reversible. So once you've downloaded and installed this app, I'll just show you here what it looks like. It's got a ton of tweaks. Uh, I'll advise you not to use all of them, especially the Windows 10 ones under Windows 11, because they're not all compatible. So something like disable background apps, that's perfectly fine. But if you go down here, there's a few behavioral tweaks that can actually affect the way Windows runs. And they work in Windows 10, but they can actually break things in Windows 11. Um, one of them was a size tweak to do with, not, not that one, um, SV cost, uh, split threshold for SV cost. If, if you want to like reduce your RAM usage um, or behavior of SV cost, this works in Windows 10, not in Windows 11. So I'll advise you to just be a bit more careful with any of the extra tweaks. But most of the basic ones work, like if it's to do with icons, uh, classic app things, uh, animations, appearance, they all seem to work fine. Um, but I'm just going to show you here the classic photo viewer app tweak. So you just want to go in here and type photos or photo, sorry and get classic app and activate and that will restore the windows photo viewer you can then go to start and type default and it'll come up with a entry for default applications click that and you can search for windows photo viewer you can see here and you can choose which types of uh, unfortunately there's not like a change all button i wish there was but you can at least change it from whatever you were using the default uh the default photos app you can change it to windows photo viewer so as you can see here i've changed uh jpgs to windows photo viewer as an example and if i just open this jpg it'll open under windows photo viewer which is the uh what most people want so you know you can you can press this button to scroll through whatever's in the folder or you can use your keyboard but to be fair the new photos app works exactly the same way so i don't even understand uh, maybe it's just to do with the button placement and the options at the top that some people have actually been asking me, how do I put the classic photo viewer back? So this is the method to do that. But if I open something under the new photos app, just as an example, it's basically the same. Um, it just looks different though. That is the thing. Uh, it can be jarring. And if you're just not used to it, you don't care about it. And you have the option to go back to the old one. Why not? You know, so I'm not going to put any of those people down. It's just um, a little bit of a learning curve if you want to learn the new the new photo viewer and it's also got a few uh questionable features like when you first open it up it'll be on a it'll just start putting stuff in albums and you know the, all this crap at the top uh, i'm not interested in if you like it uh good for you but i just find this weird this collection people folders uh, i don't want that in a photo app i just want to be able to view whatever's in the folder i'm looking at and there's even onedrive options here which if you don't use onedrive or you don't want to log into an account, as you can see here in the top right, it's got account. It's just automatically added my Microsoft account. Maybe you don't want that. And that's where the, this new photo viewer app is not that appealing. So yeah, uh, that's the way to restore the classic photo viewer. And the other fix I wanted to share, a couple of the tweaks I wanted to share as well, is classic paint. Um, if you like to right click and edit image, uh, there obviously there are more advanced image editing tools people use. If you're one of those advanced users, you obviously don't need this guide. But if you just want to, if you just use paint for certain things, like you want to resize an image, you want to crop an image, and you're just used to using it, it can be a little bit jarring to use the new paint app, which you can see I've removed it here. Um, so the the one one way you can get the classic paint app, which I don't know if they've locked down or not, is you can just uninstall. Uh, there's uninstalling tools. You can remove the new paint and it'll, it should let you access the classic paint. But if they have locked that down, 
the other method to restore plastic paint is to simply go to this website. I'll, uh, I'll put these links in the comments below. Uh, it's a Win Aero Tweaker download, but it's for classic paint and it installs it under a new entry. So it doesn't get rid of any of the default apps. It doesn't mess with the system files. It just adds a new paint tool into the system 32 directory, but it won't get erased uh, when there's Windows updates or anything like that because it's under a different uh, file name. So it's it's under mspaint1.exe. So the, that way, if you do SFC scan now, you need to repair your system files to get corruption or you do anything like that, uh, you'll still have this app or you can just reinstall this app uh, in between, you know, a reformat or things like that. So this method will continue to be useful throughout future updates as well. And it's just a small tool. You click download here, um, download the classic program, and it will give you a link, MS Classic Paint, download paint. And it's literally just a quick install. And it looks like this, just for a reference, open with paint. And it's just the old school paint if I want to. I just love how all these buttons, the, the new paint, I, I can't stand it, to be fair, because a lot of this stuff um, is changed so it doesn't look as easy like my eyes don't can't pinpoint what i need as quickly as the new paint where like the old paint's got everything you know color, kind of color coded it looks different you can't really get mixed up with the icons but the new paint is like trying to streamline everything but it's actually i find it less intuitive to use and they you know they've changed all this to circles and i, I get what they're trying to do but for some of us it's actually a jarring experience that is not uh nice on the eyes to be able to pick out your shapes and Another thing with the new paint is if you resize the window and, and you, if you've still got it installed, uh, see how if I, I do this here, I can still clearly see what, where my tools are. So I can see where my resize image is, where my brushes are, where my line colors are. You know, it, it puts it into a nice thing when you, when you shrink the window. Um, on the new paint, when you go to shrink it down, you'll have stuff like crop image and resize completely disappear. And the icons are just not intuitive to me. So anyway. Um, that's why you might want the new paint. And then on top of that, um, if you do use paint right click a lot, you then you might be so inclined to want a faster photo viewing app because usually when you use paint for your quick editing, you don't use your photos app for editing. Like even though the photos app has a button for it, as an example, uh, the new photos app, I'll just bring it up. If I want to resize an image or crop an image, you can click this edit image button here, right? And it comes up here, but where's my resize now? I can't change the wind. I want to change the um, resolution. So I've just cropped the image. Just as an example, if I want to crop it, uh, you shrink these down. And th the way it works is a bit weird. This is cropped already. And then there's a save button here, just where my uh, camera is. There's a save copy. It'll save a copy of the cropped image. So it'll be cropped exactly how I've set it in the screen now. There's no like button I have to click to actually enable the crop. It's cropped as soon as you move this uh, box. And that's that seems like nice and all, but what if I want to crop it and then change the resolution at the same time? There's no option to do that. Uh, you have to actually save your copy of it and then open the image back up. And there's a, another button somewhere, wherever it is, I've got to try to find it, under these three dots here, uh, resize, if I want to change the size, and then define custom dimensions. It's just clunky to use and if I want to for example I can do that and save resize copy but it goes straight into a resize copy like it's you know in paint if you do this you can continue editing it doesn't like create a new copy you have to open the copy it just lets you keep working on the same thing till you're done so just an example I'll open uh, the same image up in paint now if I want to do it and I just want to resize this image and crop it so we're just going to do it doesn't matter where I cropped it, okay, and then I want to resize it. Now tell me, how is that not way better? Uh, then I've resized it, and I've still got the same exact file open, and then I can save my new copy. I'm not like reopening a saved copy um, just to do a resize. I can just do the crop and the resize all at once. So this is where you might want the classic paint tool. But on top of that, as you can see how that was a bit of a jarring experience, like I don't want to use photos for my editing, obviously, because it's clunky. But I also don't want to have this jarringness, like I want to view an image, for example, I double left click it. It opens in Windows Photo Viewer or Photos. Um, and then I want to right click and go to Paint. See, I, see I'm using two different apps. Uh, this is where you want it to be streamlined. So for me, this is my personal taste, is 
first you want a good viewing app, which maybe if, if you're happy with classic photo viewer or the new photos app, just go ahead and use them. There's nothing wrong with that. But if you want a fast viewing app that is comfortable to use, I find Honeyview very, very good. And Honeyview looks like this. Um, it's, it's, they're all really close, to be honest. The performance, uh, for just viewing a photo, they're all very similar. They're all fast if you've got a decent, speed, uh, decent system. But Honeyview looks like this. The window is borderless. And I can scroll through with the mouse wheel. Where did that open? That opened a smaller picture. And you can set it to resize the window to whatever image you're viewing. So if I just uh, minimize these background tabs just so you can see a bit better. This is Honeyview here. Wait, not that one. This is Honeyview, this window here. And I'm scrolling through images in the folder. And if I want to zoom in on an image, I hold control and zoom in. So that, that's a pretty standard function, holding control. And then I can also use the arrow keys to cycle through the images. Now, the reason I like Honeyview is just because it is borderless. It's just a nice viewing experience to look at a photo. Um, and you can set, if I right click at the top here, configuration, under view, you can set it, save fixed zoom in and out state. So it saves, you know, whatever you were looking at. If you had it zoomed in and you reopened that file, it's saved. Uh, you can set it to, where is it? Show the main window border if you want to see the border, but obviously a lot of us would like to take the border away. So if I show it now, you can see there's a border on this window. Uh, the border is around the edge. It's really subtle, but you don't need this border. It's just optional. And under miscellaneous, adjust window size to image size. So that's where you got the window changing its size to match whatever image you're viewing. So that's why I just prefer Honeyview. I find it um, really just, it's just sleek. Um, for lack of a better way to describe it. So I've just taken away the border. And just in comparison, we'll put Honeyview here on the left. And as you can see, when I'm viewing a photo, when it's borderless, it just looks really nice. There's no clunky file explorer type window around it. And so I've got that image. And then we will open something up in Classic, which is Windows Photo Viewer. And you've got all this clunkiness here. Which, nothing wrong if you if you don't mind it. If you like this window, this, like perfectly fine. It's just for me, this is my personal preference here on the left with Honeyview and on the right, uh, this is kind of dated now. Um, and I'm not going to, I don't use any of these functions. So as a photo viewer app, it just looks really old. And you can still, um, oh no, you can't mouse wheel through because mouse wheel zooms in instead. So I prefer where I can just use the mouse wheel to cycle through my pictures and then control, holding control and then moving the mouse wheel is my zoom. So that's where I prefer that. And as you can see here, if I want to zoom in and have two images side by side, if I'm using Honeyview, I get the full, like apart from my taskbar at the bottom, I get the full image. And if I'm on here with the uh, right hand on classic, I get this massive border at the top and the bottom. And then if I want to print screen that and put it into paint because I want to crop it, I just want to like have a side by side of something. It's not going to be as clean. Like I can crop out the taskbar, but then I've got, as you can see here, this photo viewer uh, window is too big. And the same thing with the photos app. So I'll just close Honeyview for a second. And the other thing, uh, Honeyview lets you close it just by tapping the escape key. If you have classic photo viewer open, escape does nothing. You can't quickly close it. You've got to click the X in the corner, which I know it's just like a simple thing, but when you're used to using keyboard shortcuts, it does make a difference to your multitasking. So that's another uh, pro of Honeyview. And if we open up another image now in, just see, I'll just pick something here. In photos, you get the same problem, is it's clunky looking. So I want to zoom in an image. Um, mouse wheel is zoom. It's not as bad. It's actually closer to honey view, but I don't know how to disable the border. I don't think there is an option to disable the border. We'll see if there is a settings option, disable border somewhere. No. There is one good setting in here, though, uh, in the new Photos app, is I recommend you turn this on. If you like to use our uh, mouse wheel for zoom, you can set mouse wheel will swap, uh, will scroll between items in the folder. And that's the that's the original behavior that I think is more intuitive. So view next or previous item instead of zoom in and zoom out. And that way you can press control to zoom in and out when you need to. So now when I cycle through, you can see that instead of having to click these icons at the bottom, um, I can just use the mouse wheel. And the good thing about that is 
with the new photos app, one thing I know people have messaged me about that they don't like is when they enter full screen mode, which a lot of people do, they want it, they want their photo to be bigger. You actually lose it, it. The the file, um, you know, the thumb icons are gone, so you can't actually see what what you're looking through anymore. And so when you full screen it, if you leave it on the default behavior, mouse wheel zooms in and out, so you end up stuck on a giant image and your mouse wheel only lets you zoom in and out. And then that's where they lead to saying, I can't scroll through my folder. And the actual way that you scroll through it, like it doesn't tell you, is you move your mouse to the side. There's a there's a scroll button on the side. Uh, so you move your mouse to the edge of the screen. That'll let you cycle through what's in the folder. But it's not that intuitive. Not everyone knows that straight away. And not everyone even thinks, oh, I can I can cycle through my album this way. And the other thing is um, you can also use the left and right, but not the up and down. So left and right on your keyboard will also let you cycle through the photos. But again, it's not that intuitive. And at least, though, you can set the mouse wheel behavior. So as you can see now, I'm cycling through the folder using my mouse wheel. And control still lets me zoom in and out. So that is that is one plus, actually, over a classic uh, Windows Photo Viewer that the new Photos app has. So this is the new Photos app. But again, as you can see, if I maximize this, I've still got a fair bit of a border here at the top. And if all I'm going to use it for is viewing photos, it's still not that streamlined. And it's a little bit, you know, like what if you want to just look at a photo and you don't want these menus? How do I get rid of those? Uh, I've got to scroll to... Like, they'll come up as soon as you move the mouse. So, you know, it's just like if you don't want the menus or you don't use them, it's nice to see the thumbnails at the bottom. But if you don't use these menus, um, it is still a little bit annoying to just have them there in the first place. Like, I don't want to see these popping up every time. Can I disable them? Uh, there's no option that seems to let me disable the menus. If I look through the settings here. So, basically, that's the main reason I wanted to share that is because, especially if you're just comparing... Um, photos like you want to you want to have a few photos on the screen and take a screenshot uh, and you say you want to open three instances of it like I'm, I'm opening a few windows here just for an example uh, just pretend that this was all paint or all classic you have these menu bars get in the way and now I'll do a honey view experience where if we open four copies of honey view so this is honey view I'll, I'll just close all these because this is getting too cluttered. So if I open four copies in Honey View, this is what it's like. Okay, get rid of the file explorer. This is all should have used better images. Where's my floor tiny view? Do I have a floor spot? This one. Okay, I've got something else here. My camera's in the way. Give me a sec. I did have four copies off, I swear. Yeah. If this is brave. Sorry about that, guys. So four copies of an image in a honey view. And I know there are people that would appreciate this feature, but you can just see these are all different images. I'll, I'll just put them onto like actual photos and stuff so that you can actually see what I'm talking about to do with um, comparing images or you're like trying to sort out images for editing or seeing like you just... For example, you have four pictures. You want to see which is the best picture. You're going to use it for something. Uh, they could be for photo work or whatever. This is what Honey View looks like. No menus popping up. I can hold Control to zoom in. And if I did zoom all of them in, there is virtually no border. Uh, that, that border is built into the image. There we go. So that is what it looks like. There is no border. All I get is the file name so that I know which file to, to keep or edit. And then you can still drag the image around. And the other good thing is, even though I don't have an X in the corner for these uh, borderless images, I can click a window, for example, this top left one. I can double click it to maximize it. Double click it like that. And then I can, if you have to zoom out to drag it, because the header is part of, like, if you maximize it, obviously dragging it will drag the image. You just got to hold control, zoom out a bit, 
and I can put it back in the top corner, zoom back in, and then if I'm done with that, I'm going to go, okay, this is a bad one. I'm going to delete that. Um, you can just press escape to close it, so then you don't need the X. And, you know, I can click all these windows, and they're all gone. So well, you can't do that with a uh, classic. You have to be clicking the X, and then you've got the border. And if you want to take a screenshot, put them all side by side. You've got the border in all of them. Uh, it's kind of just a hassle to use. So that's where I recommend Honeyview. And then if you've got Honeyview, you still want your editing, right? So we've I've already talked about classic paint, but there is one more trick you can do is if you've got your, for example, your photo viewer, and I'm just going to use Honeyview as my example, um, I don't want the photos app. So the photos app, it, it is nice. It's not bad. Um, I'm going to, I'll be fair. It's not bad, but I'm not going to use it for editing. So if I don't use it for editing, that kind of negates all the extra functionality it has. All I want to edit with is paint or, you know, some other uh, image editing app. So if that's the case, then let's see here if it lets me uninstall it from here. No, it doesn't. There is a way to uninstall it. I had an uninstalling app, but I don't know if it'll let me do it from here anymore. There is a way to uninstall it. I just haven't. Oh, in apps and features. Advanced? No. Okay, it's not letting me. I reinstalled it this morning just to do this video. So I need to look up how to do that again. And this is how you do anything really on Windows, but is you just Google it and it'll be the top result usually. See if they look give me an option here. This is not a good guide. Let's zoom out a bit. Oh, you need to do a PowerShell command, sorry. At least you can see me do it now, I'm just doing it live on camera because I just installed, I reinstalled the Photos app just to show you guys why I don't like it. But, let's see here. Is this to reinstall it or to get rid of it? You want to uninstall the app from all user accounts. Step five. Oh, there's got to be a better way. That's not a good one. Oh, that's they're there. That that's the command I wanted. What like what the other guide was just telling you. You got to like get the app name and do other steps. This is all we wanted in elevated PowerShell. And you just let's see here PowerShell. Run as admin. Right click it and run as admin. So I did what I did was I typed PowerShell. Right click. Run as administrator. And I also on this page where it had the actual command. Get get apex package you know microsoft windows photos highlight it control c that copies the uh the text line paste it so control v into powershell and press enter and that should be done um i'll exit out and let's see if i right click do i still have photos app it's gone so and i can also go down here i'll type uh photo it's gone so there's only photo gallery now and I don't even use photo gallery. I don't think, wait, which photo gallery is this? Oh, this is somewhere I've like uninstalled stuff that I didn't want. So photo gallery can go. Do I have it in here? Wait, maybe it's built in somewhere. Is it, is it one of these um, fancy Remove photo gallery. I need to look up how to do that too. I think it's part of the photo viewer app actually. So, you know, if I right click here and I want to use the uh, Windows photo viewer, it's also connected to that possibly. Um, so as I said, like I showed just earlier how to uh, restore the classic photos app, which I don't use. I was just showing you, um, you just go into WinArrow Tweaker and type, you know, activate it in here. Uh, I'm going to deactivate it. And we'll see if, 
a photo gallery does still come up. How do I get rid of photo gallery? If I open this, classic. No, let me see. Let me see where this. Uh, I, I I don't want this app on my computer. Let's go file location. It's in programs photo gallery. The shortcut points to Windows Live photo gallery. Oh, I, I installed a Windows Live package to get Movie Maker back because so I use Movie Maker for kind of resizing quick videos that I'm going to share, like through Facebook or something. I find it uh, faster than a lot of the uh, higher end programs. And I think that reinstalled the photo gallery. And that comes up in Start Menu Program. So I could just delete it from there at least to get rid of the shortcut coming up. Maybe that'll stop it. Yeah. So. I just deleted the uh, shortcut. It's still somewhere on the system, but it's not. I don't think it's a big app. That's not a big deal to me. So the thing I wanted to share, um, you can just watch me do that. I'll, I'll share those commands in the um, comments below. But the other thing I wanted to share is, so you've got your app, whatever it is. I don't, I don't mind what it is. Uh, you're using Photos or you're using Classic Photo or you're using Honeyview. So you can open your images. I've got to get rid of that too, um, Classic Photo Viewer. Sorry. This one I disabled photo viewer, but I think I may still have, um, I need to restart Explorer, so Task Manager, to get rid of the context. Um, let's just see if that gets rid of it, I'm not sure. Restart. So now when I go to a picture, Photo gallery is still there in the context menu. That's kind of annoying. I want to get rid of photo gallery. The Windows 10 command will work. Uh, how to uninstall Windows Live Photo Gallery? App with CPL under Start. It's a control panel item. So it's under Windows Live. Maybe that's why it was coming up whenever I tried to search it, but I'm not seeing it in here. Is it under a feature? Media features, no, that's media player. Let's try to organize. No. Where is it? I have too many games installed here that I haven't tested. It's under Windows Essentials. So maybe I can uninstall it through here. Remove one or more. Photo gallery. And, yeah, they're tied together. So that, that's what I was actually thinking. Because I... I, I there's a Windows Essentials 2012 pack you can reinstall to get the Movie Maker back because it was gone in newer Windows. And yeah, it comes with Photo Gallery. Anyway, that's not a big deal. I just wanted to see. That's just, that's kind of a bit of DIY. Like if you were trying to figure out how to do something, it's as simple as Googling it and finding, like if you're reading a guide and the guide seems like kind of complicated, um, you can probably find an easier guide if you just check a few of the top results. But anyway, the, the main point is you got your app right. Make sure it's active as the default application. So if you've restored the classic, uh, you want to go into default apps and set all your photos to open with Windows Photo Viewer, for example. So you want to set it, you know, set it to all of those. Uh, or if you're using the classic photos app, which I don't have anymore, you do it that way. But with Honeyview, the other way you can do it, if for some reason your file extensions, as you can see here, I've got it all um, set to Honeyview. If for some reason, your file extensions weren't working properly. Honeyview also has an option to, you just open an image with Honeyview, uh, open with, and make sure the image is at 100% or less. So not all the way at like 200, because then it'll just drag the image. Make sure it's at about 100% so that you get your, your taskbar will still be active. Oh, wait, maybe 90%. But you basically want the top of your bar to still work. So you can also try maximizing it, that might get it working. But you right-click up here, once you've got your 
taskbar working that lets you drag the image. Right click at the top. Wait, let me see if it lets me do that even with 70%. Oh, it does. Okay, so even at 100%, it doesn't matter if your image is dragging or not. Uh, right click at the top, go to configuration, and you can go down to, or is it, association, and click classic method. And that lets you set your viewer for all types. So even if you've had another program mess with it, you can just restore it back so that Honeyview is the default application for all of your photos and images. And then you can also go to, um, where is it? Under view, yeah, everything except for main border. I think I customized that myself. So once you've done that, you've got your image viewer, right? I'll open an image, okay? So I can easily browse through my images. Then you want your, your right click edit menu. Now this is where I'll show you something else. Instead of going right click, open with, because this adds an extra step that you have to do it every single time. You just want to do something so simple like resize or change the, um, You've got your app that you use, so it can be paint, it can be anything else. There's other apps that are good for editing images. Um, but you basically want to be able to do this. This is what I think is cool, is you want to be able to right click and go to edit and open your app. And that's um, very intuitive and easy, and it saves time over many months of editing images. You'll obviously save a few that can add up. So to do that, I'll link you this guide in the comments below. Uh, let's see where it is. Uh, it's on a winner of Tweaker's website, uh, believe it or not. So go through this guide and basically I'll, I'll do a quick rundown of what you've got to do. It's just a registry change. And this entry will be completely missing from Windows 11. So it's a Windows 10 guide. They haven't done it for Windows 11 yet, but it works. Um, so you just want to go to start type R-E-V-E. -E, that will bring up registry. I think even just R-E-G will bring up registry editor. And the way you can use registry editor, if you're unfamiliar with it, it's safe to do it this way as long as you're not misclicking and typing random stuff or pressing delete on anything. Like you don't want to click on a random folder and accidentally press delete. That's how you can mess up your uh, Windows install, your registry. Um, so basically you want to go to whatever address they tell you. And the way registry um, regedit works is you can just highlight the address here. Like they've given us the key. Control C to copy it. And then just, except for computer, don't take computer away because it's your computer where the address goes. You want it to be from wherever H key is defaulting to. So you might have had something open, or if you've never had anything open, it just might look like this. And you just backspace, highlight uh, the H key part, and then have your new address that you want to navigate to, and Control V, and that will, and then press Enter, and that will bring up exactly where you need to be, as, sees, as you can see in the screenshot here. And they tell you to go to this folder. Um, image shell edit command. And for me, I only had shell print. Uh, edit and command were gone. So to, to get those back, I just created them. Uh, right click new key and then name it edit. And then on edit, right click new key and name it command. And then inside the command folder is where you put your address for whatever imaging app you want on your right click context menu. So for me, it was, I'll just double click because it'll have a default in there. And in the default, you double click it. And this is where you put the key. You put um, basically the directory of your executable for whatever editing program you're using. So for me, it was MS Paint, which the MS Paint Classic install uh, EXE goes into the System32 uh, folder. And I just put C drive, Windows, System32, MS Paint, like that. Um, but you, you'll you have, I, I can't remember if it's default in there, but it doesn't matter. You can just, I'll, I'll put this in the comments below. Just copy and paste this and then find your own directory for whatever, whatever app you're using. So if you're running an app, I'll just use, I'll use my browser because it works the same as an example or Honeyview, for example. Um, if you've got your image editing app, let's pretend it's Honeyview. You can just right click it at the bottom of the screen, right click Honeyview or whatever your app is and go to properties and it will bring up the directory just like that. See the target? It's got the target for my Honeyview EXE. Control C to copy it, and then go back to registry editor. Take out this inside the um, inside the captions and Control V. And I'm not going to actually do it, but Control V, I would do it like that. Make sure you don't have any extra um, extra things there. And it also has to have percent one, and that way it uh, the percent one command tells you to to open it with the particular file you're right clicking for opening with. So um, they describe it here, it's important. Um, so it passes the file name to the open app. 
So, you know, Honeybee would be one way to do it, or you'd have your, your, your editing program. And that's how you add a right click menu. And then after you've done that, after you've got your command in there, um, just close the window. And then when you go into your folder, you can just right click and edit and your app should open. And if it doesn't open for some reason, the file name is wrong. So you might have had something weird go wrong with your, um, with your, what are they called? Abbreviation thingies, um, speech caption things. What, what do they call? I can't even remember. I, I, I'm a bit tired. Sorry, my kids have been keeping me up. But yeah, you might have just um, accidentally got two of them in there or something like that. And that's why it's not working. And you just have to make sure it's the exact file directory with the two dots and everything. So yeah, um, that's how I do it in, that's how I do image viewing in Windows 11. And it kind of, it's kind of old school, but still a little bit modernized in the fact that Honeyview is a very modern feeling app. And then, you know, you can drag to the top left and it's just, I just find it so easy for looking at photos without, without the clunkiness of all the uh, extra borders on the windows. So you can just see how easily I was able to put four images side by side without borders. And I can, uh, this is a very bad example of images you would do this with, um, but just, just as an example, I could then print screen that, paste, and apart from the file name, which is not a big deal, like it's it's not as jarring, you, like you can crop out that file name, but at least it you can see what, like you might have details in the file name that you want, but you're not having this clunky, huge border um, messing up your, your comparison uh, image. And then I can zoom that out. And you can also see how handy the classic paint is. I can also just resize it now, 1280. Um, by 720 or something like that and then save it you know like it I for me that's just so much easier than the newer apps that they're trying to force on us so I hope that helps some of you out this turned out to be a way longer video than I intended guys um, but it's for the people that particularly do this kind of stuff so if, if you felt this was drawn out and long-winded uh, obviously maybe you weren't the target audience and I'm sorry it's just um, I know there are people that will appreciate this so if it helps you out, then cool and glad to be of service. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next uh, guide I do. Bye.